<laughs> hey, hey. All right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. everybody hello aurora you was first good morning millie hello 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 to everybody watching everybody in the bushes everybody around the world hello 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 good morning good evening hello roxy d good to see you everybody i wanted to come on here and make a short live while um well, while I felt like it, <laughs> that's why, <laughs> while I felt like it, W-J-R-A Hall, hello, honey, welcome, welcome, everybody is welcome here, until you're not, that's my saying, Moonlight Magic, hello, Moonlight, hello, thank you all for being here, and thank you for watching Hello, hello, hello. I just want to talk about a few things this morning. So, um, we know Gunner was found. The little boy that was missing out in North Carolina, the preacher's son. He was found. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. So, why is it that everybody is found except the ones that's not? It makes me think that that is something nefarious going on with the ones that's not. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, usually kids are found within like three hours. Just saying, just saying. If you have any information on Summer Moon, Utah Wells or Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers, Please call 1-800-TBI-FIND. These are two that's really near and dear to my heart that really need to be found. That really need to be found. So we'll get into all that in a minute. Yeah, thank goodness he was found. I know his parents was worried to death. And he's... They're working on him being reunited if he hasn't already been with his parents. His dad was a preacher and he went missing from the church there. Exactly. Usually parents don't lie and they can be reunited soon. And found soon. 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 <laughs> There's the official information on Sebastian. 15 years old, male, white, brown eyes, brown hair, 5'5". Five, five. The Amber Alert says 120 pounds. However, his dad says he weighs more like 106 pounds. So there's that. Mm, my head's hurting today. So we're going to get into some things. Y'all heard the news, I guess, that O.J. Simpson died. I know some of y'all may not care, but he was once a legend in football, and he was definitely put back on the map when Nicole Simpson and Ronald Goldman was killed. And the majority of the world thinks he did it. He did it. <laughs> and everybody says, and everybody's allowed their opinions now. Everybody says, Smiley, you are always thinking everybody did it. And you're always did it, did it, did it. Well, I've never said it on here. Well, did he abuse Nicole? Sure he did. absolutely. freaking lutely and I stand with the victim. I still stand with Nicole, and she was a victim of his domestic violence. Do I think that he did it? I'm probably the 1% who does not think OJ did that. That's just me. Don't 
come for me. That's just me. I don't think he did it. I remember being in Pensacola and being so engored in that trial. Oh my God, I would not leave to go get something to eat. I would not. I watched every single word and I was not on YouTube. I hung on to everything. Everything, honey. Everything. And I just don't think he did it. Yeah, he passed. He passed of cancer. I didn't know he had cancer. I did not know that. But I'm just going to tell the truth and how I see it. That's just me. So don't always think Smiley is just banging at the door saying, they did it. They're guilty. They're guilty. They're guilty. And look, I don't care about O.J. Simpson. I don't give two sheets to the wind about O.J. Simpson. Never watched him in football. Didn't give a holy crap about him. Again, he was only put back on the map because of what happened, in my opinion. But did he abuse her? Hell yeah, he sure did. And he's a rotten egg for that. I stand with, um, I stand with Nicole. I stand with Nicole on that. And that's okay, Hawk. That's just my opinion. And y'all are allowed your opinion. But I just thought I'd throw it out there. Just so y'all know and don't get it mixed up. I'm not always for, I'm not, what I'm saying is in these cases, I say what I mean, and I mean what I say. Do I think the Proudfoots are guilty? Freak yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And that's my opinion, and I'm entitled to it. I'm entitled to it. I'm entitled to it. And that's where I lie on that. I'm just saying, it just happened to pop up today about OJ, so I thought I'd let y'all know. Because I would be two-faced if I come on here and said, oh, you know, go now y'all got your wish or whatever. I'm just saying, you know what I'm saying? I can't do that. I'm not fake. I'm just not. But everybody's allowed their opinions. But do I think he's a dirty dog? Frick yeah. Frick yeah. And I'm glad for the ones that think he did it or, uh, and, and, and poor Ronald Goldman's family. Oh my Lord. I, I'm glad that hopefully finally some, some of those can have some closure. And that's all I'm saying, you know, either way. Hey, Bethany, everybody coming in. Now, um, everybody coming in. I want to, I don't know where I want to start at today because there's so, so, um, it's not that it's so much. It's just, I want to play y'all. How many people's in here? Oh, it's 164. Okay. On my end. Um, I'll start out with this. Let me share something. Hold on. Let me take this down. Um, I want, I guess I'll start out with this. Hey, goddess. Hello, everybody. Uh, Dixie, Tennessee, Mountain Sin, Roxy, Bethany, Casey, anybody I miss, C. Taylor, anybody I've missed, I'm sorry. Um, okay, let me, let me present. I want to share something with y'all real quick. And y'all put the, it's a, it's a short that I found this morning. And I thought it was short and to the point. Um, share the link and share. I'm liking the sharing stuff. Share the link and share, um, you know, the copyright and all the things. Um, hold on. All right, this is a bedtime story. 15-year-old Sebastian Rogers has been missing for well over a month. Some people think that he ran away 
and with somebody that he met on social media. Some people think he ran away and perhaps is stuck in a chimney. Some people think perhaps he was abducted. I'm not buying any of these theories, and here's why. Number one, according to his mother, Katie Proudfoot, he was not allowed on social media. So how would he have met someone? Number two, he left without his phone on him. What teenager looking to meet someone or to run away leaves without their cell phone? Number three, according to his mother, he left not wearing shoes. We also heard, according to his father, Seth Rogers, that he's terrified of going out barefoot in nature because of a traumatic experience as a child stepping on fire ants. Number four, he was not often invited over for playdates, according to his mother, Katie Proudfoot. Thus, it doesn't sound like he has a lot of friends to run away with or to hook up with, etc. Six, he didn't want to leave his biological father's house to go back to mom Katie Proudfoot and stepdad Chris Proudfoot's house on several occasions, but he didn't explain to his father Seth why that was. Seven, according to his mother Katie Proudfoot, Sebastian was not one to run away, at least based on past behavior. Number eight, law enforcement has said that there were no signs of a break in or a break out. In addition, the dogs did not bark. Chris Proudfoot did not take the polygraph that Nancy Grace set up for him. Why is that? Is he hiding something? At least that we know so far, there don't seem to be any ring cameras in the neighborhood that picked up Sebastian walking away from that house. Okay. Hold on. How do I go? Oh, no, 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 stop. Family Riley Stain, of course, the college student from Missouri who went missing from downtown Nashville. Okay. How do I get that off? Oh, my God. See, this is why I'm having my problem. How do I get that off? I'm not sure how to get that off. I think this is where I clicked out of it last time. Hmm. Hey, that girl. Okay, I'm trying to figure out. I'm just going to click out of it. Okay. Anyway, it's all good. I'll figure it out later. Um, so, yeah, I really like that short that she was to the point and a couple of reasons why. Yeah, let's put her up. A couple of reasons why that he couldn't. Of course, I do agree that. Kids are smart and they can find a way to get on the internet even when you don't know it and Wi-Fi. Lord knows Smiley had figured that out after I changed phones. And actually, because I'm used to it, I have been, before my phone cracks all to pieces, using my Wi-Fi on this one. Lord have mercy. So anyway... That's how I ended up actually accidentally taking my phone with me the other day and I didn't have no Wi-Fi. I took the old phone versus the new phone. It's cray cray, y'all. Cray cray. Um, and, but I put notes on this one. So anyway. Um, so um, bedtime stories, I believe she's on point with that. And um, I what in the heck? Sound like a freaking gun. A pew pew shot. It's the wind. It's blowing things everywhere. Anyway. Hmm, I'll be sitting by this window, girl. You never know. You never know. Jump. No, you see Smiley jump. <laughs> be cray cray out there. I don't have no trees. It must have been must have been my chair blew out. Anyway, I don't know. Oh Lord, Smiley Bethany said. <laughs> I done moved from that window once. Now I moved over here. And I'm still by the window. Ooh. Anyway, anyway, you never, never, ever know, do you? Anyway, what was I saying? Okay, I'm reading it and still can't say it. But um, I agree um, with bed, bed crime stories that 
he did not leave on his own, Sebastian. That's me. Um, he did not run away, period. That's me. And if he, <laughs> Tano's laughing at me. Lord, <laughs> you needed that laugh, didn't you, Dino? <laughs> I know it's been crazy. Well, it's not raining right now. It rained and thundered and stormed all night long. But it's it's good over here now. I hope it's good in Smiley's hood right now. I don't know. Mm. But this, this, you know, this is true in my opinion. And this is what I think. Hey, Andy. <laughs> Hello, good morning. Um, but this, my people, is a very true story. So wake up and stay woke. Now, what happened to him? Who did it? And where is he? Is the questions in my mind. In my mind. Is what we need to be asking. And all this other mess just needs to stop. Yep, I did, Marlena. I was just talking about that earlier. I was just talking about that earlier. Sure did. He sure did. Um, if Katie and Chris said, um, which to me, if Chris is so sure that he was three and a half hours away, or at least that's where he's putting himself, then he's pretty stupid, in my opinion, to even open his pie hole to say a darn thing, um, to even try to control anything at all. That's just my opinion. Um, he's not, he, he's not there, according to him and according to Katie. Although he slipped up a couple of times and put himself there. Thank you, Marlena. But he said he wasn't there since the beginning of February. So in my interview with them, I asked Katie, I bluntly asked her why he said, Chris, why he said he's not seen Sebastian since the first week of February. That means, in my mind, I was saying on Messenger, Facebook, whatever, FaceTime, why he said he hasn't seen Sebastian since February. And Katie said, because it's the truth. She said, because it's true. Her words, not mine. So, okay, then, if it's the truth, then Chris needs, in my opinion, to sit all the way down, shut all the way up, and say zero about anything, in my opinion. But that's just my opinion. Everybody's got one. He did not and is not, in my opinion, there, according to them. Now, I'm not going to say he's not. That's just my opinion, you know. So, that's not looking out for his wife. As he said, that's what he was doing. Looking out for his wife. He did say that somewhere. That's not looking out for his wife. Oh, and especially, how is... How is that looking out for your wife anyway? I mean, after all, he's been on the prowl. <laughs> he's been on the prowl. Now, he don't want to be called out for that. You know, he's been on the prowl chasing Cooter. <laughs> Y'all know what Cooter is, I'm sure. <laughs> That's the nice way. He's been chasing Cooter from all these strange women. In these restaurants and online. Not wearing his wedding ring. No tan lines. He could possibly bring home something that Ajax can't even wash off to his wife. Is that watching out? 
for his wife? Is it Mr. Scooby-Doo or Goofy or Donald Duck? Whatever you're putting on your tickets these days. I don't, I don't know what you're calling yourself. Like Pinocchio? He's not thinking about his wife. He's thinking about that cooter booter. Not at all, in my opinion. Not in any way, shape, or form. In my opinion, he's involved somehow, some way. You know what? To me, Chris is one sick and sickening individual. He told Seth Rogers, Sebastian's real bio dad, if people don't quit bothering me, I'm going to tell the truth about Sebastian. And then everyone, everyone, and I mean everyone, even the police will stop looking for your son. Who does that? Well, let me tell you something, Chris Proudfoot. Seth, Seth got ahead of that game. And y'all really didn't like it when he did. He wasn't about to be blackmailed. Thank you, Bethany. Yeah, Ajax can't wash the truth off. Neither can bleach. There ain't nothing. Not even that penicillin. Just saying. Thank you. When Seth got the truth out there, he decided he was not going to be blackmailed anymore. He was not afraid of you. He is not afraid of you. And he's not going to let anything stop him from searching or getting his son's name out there and using it correctly, period. He's not going to let you or anybody else stop him. Thank you, Cassie. Absolutely. We see you, Chris. We absolutely see you. And Seth said himself, I heard it. I heard it on Pascal. Chris, uh, sorry. Oh, absolutely sorry. Seth said himself, he does not want, in all fairness, he does not want Katie or Chris to be guilty of anything. That's the type of man he is. He's not out on a witch hunt. He does not want them to be guilty of anything. But you know what? He's not going to be blackmailed and he's not going to let his son be pushed under the rug anymore. That's a real man and that's a real father. Period. Absolutely. Seth said, I mean, Chris said, if people don't quit bothering me, I'm going to tell the truth about Sebastian. And then everyone, and I mean everyone, even the police will stop looking for your son. Are you kidding me? That is so childish. That's about what he did with the CPS talking to Sebastian. <laughs> Look, they did nothing. Get in there and eat your supper. Get in there right now. They're not going to do anything. Let me tell you something, Chris, Mr. Chris. And I say that lightly. 
it's a back joke for the, those of you that don't know. Yes, he said that, Marlena. Let me tell you something, Chris. Seth got ahead of that game, and you don't control who is going to look for Sebastian. None of your minions are going to stop it. You might think you took a page out of Summerwell's story. I don't know where you're getting your information. The cops are not going to stop looking no matter what. I'm not going to stop looking no matter who you might think you send. We are not going to be threatened. The ones that do care. And we're never, ever, ever going to stop until he's found. And he's brought back either way. And he gets justice and dignity either way. Um, uh, which brings me, I want to show y'all something else. Hold, hold on a minute present share screen hold on I gotta cancel that hold on a minute just hold on a minute Y'all just hold on if you're still there. Y'all, I'm still here. Just wait a minute. I got to find something. Hold on. Oh, Jesus. I don't know where it's at because I thought I had it up there. Let me do this. Jesus Christ. That's why I don't like, um, Dino, you're going to have to tell me how to keep that up. But hold on a minute. We, we're going to do it this way just a second because it's not import trust and belief. Holy guacamole, folks. Hold on. We're going to do this. This is going to be the last time I'm going to bring this up. Um, so we got somebody that wants to be me. Okay. We got somebody that wants to be me. Um, and I'm gonna play y'all this video. You probably already seen it. Somebody sent it to me this morning. Oh, I'm not upset about it. I think it's funny as hell. They got five, five subscribers. I just wanted to put it up here big where you could see it, but they got five. Hold on. And look what they named. 
Look what they named theirself. Look, they kind of dressed up like my picture and everything. Look how they, what they named theirself. To me, they're psycho. But hold on a minute. We're going to play this. You won't believe what I stumbled oh. upon while surfing the internet today. So, apparently, there's this cheeky character named Smiley Story out there trying to, ahem, imitate yours truly on YouTube. Can you even imagine the audacity? But hey, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, right? Well, let me tell you, Smiley's got some serious competition on her hands because nobody can rock the crime-solving scene quite like yours truly. Now, I've peeked at Smiley's shenanigans, and let me tell you, she's got some nerve. But hey... I'm all about spreading the joy of true crime, so I guess I'll let it slide. This time. But mark my words, Smiley. You better step up your game because this crime-fighting diva isn't backing down anytime soon. So, to my loyal subscribers, fear not. The one and only Smelly Story is still here to bring you all the smelly, sensational, and downright wacky true crime content you crave. Let's keep sleuthing, folks, because the world of crime never sleeps, and neither do I. Until next time, toodaloo. So all of your loyal subscribers, five, five, that's all you got? Not her real voice? Imagine that. I was sent that through an email this morning. I don't know who she is and don't care who she is. Um, I don't know, but she loved to name herself Smelly. Who would name their self Smelly? Yeah, they're irrelevant, but I just thought I would show you that's out on the, that's out on the um, streets. And look at Smelly's videos. Uh, I, I don't know what to say about it. Jealous much? Jealous much? I would hate to take, we're going to talk about it a minute, and then I'm never, ever, 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 ever going to mention it again. Don't ever send me nothing of hers. Yeah, white boy uses the name shenanigans. I I, I, I could care less about any of that trash. Y'all know that. But y'all can go on there and buy one of my Karma, Karma shirts. This is dedicated to pickle dick ears. I use it for my workouts and stuff like that. But anyway, y'all know what it's for. That's why I wore it today. Karma's a bitch. Anyway, um, they can't stand it because I won't use their names. Oh, I am honored. They even, they even made the outfit like mine. They even made the outfit like mine. You know, first they don't want you talking about summer whales. And then they are crying because they can't get content because I, I don't know, man, you're not talking about summer whales. Well, there's no news. Yeah. Smile around and find the fuck out. I don't know. I think it's hilarious, but I still won't be talking about them. This is the one and only time I want them to know. I see you and I don't care. All I can say is, Consider the source. Consider the source. And I'm not going anywhere. I'll never go anywhere. I won't. And jealous much? You could never be me. I don't care what you do. Yeah, it's sad that someone goes through all that trouble and all that time when they could be spending time trying to find these kids or advocate for the missing or the victims they are absolutely not for victims they're for money 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 that's what they're for so um in my opinion um i say consider the source jealous much and i would hate to be using the name smelly for anything, just to get attention, just saying. And I, I did want to do this. Um, causes of jealousy, 
various factors such as childhood experiences, per, uh, parental relationships, and fear of abandonment. And I'm so sorry you had such a bad childhood and fear of abandonment. I mean, that's sad. Wow. If you've experienced emotional abuse or betrayal from a past relationship, that can start to taint your view of future relationships if the trauma goes unchecked. Maybe you need to get that checked, honey. This is where jealousy can rear its head and feed into those feelings by making you feel anxious or afraid of losing the person you're now with. Well, geez, keep that over there because you ain't coming over here. Smiley don't want you, honey. Bottom line is whatever your problem is or your intentions are, I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to stop. I think it's pretty funny, and this will be the last time, no matter what you do or you say, you will get my attention. But you can never, ever, 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 ever be me. Not Smiley, not Tammy, not me, period. That's with a D and a T, okay? You're nothing and you will never go anywhere in life. And you have nothing or anything or anyone in life and you won't in the long run. You're probably, in my opinion, more than likely, you will end up dying all along a slow, long, lonely death all by yourself. And that's even if you have kids or grandkids. And that's my opinion. That's my opinion. I'm willing to bet that one. I'm, I'm willing to bet anything on that. James 3.16 says, For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder in every vow practice. Just in case you didn't know. So go chew on that and while, uh, a while and get your life in order. I don't know you and I never want to. I don't care about you and what you're doing. Not now. Not ever. Just know you will never be me. You'll never be me. And I'm on a mission and I'm going to continue on that mission. You will not stop me. You can't stop me. I will continue to do what's right. I will continue to grow. And I will continue. You're not going to stop me, period. That's the end of that story. That's period. Hey, Seth. I hope you're doing all right, hon. As well as can be. I want you to know I'm here for you a thousand percent, a million percent. Yep. Thank you for putting Seth's GoFundMe page up here. Drop his cash app. And I'm sorry if I missed any of his comments. Seth, anytime, if you want to come up here and say anything, you know you're more than welcome. I just don't know what to do because I don't want to ever put any pressure on you. Never, ever, ever. I'm not here for any of that. But you know and know always you're welcome at any time. I'm here for Sebastian. I, I'm here always for the good no matter what. I want nothing more than for him to be found. 
I want him found safe. But either way, I want him to have nothing but dignity and be brought back as soon as possible. Period. And that's a fact. And these people out here doing the things that they're doing, I, I need y'all to stop because none of it is important. Sebastian is what's important. He's important. He's important. He is so important. He always was. He always will be. And I would like to start seeing things. What he liked to do. I'd like to see more of that. Absolutely. Absolutely. So many people in here support Seth. And we are all praying for strength. Oh, he wanted to call in. Okay. Um, he wanted to call in. Call in to 850-691-5559. I think that's it. I hadn't had a call in in a long time. 850-691-5559. <laughs> Did y'all get that? Oh, he might have had a phone call. Okay. He might have had a phone call. Any yeah. Okay. Well, he can if he gets that, he can put in his he can put this in his and call call if he wants to at any time. Um, and that's fine. He might have had a phone call. But he knows that I'm with him a thousand percent. I don't ever want to pressure him. I know he's under a lot of pressure and a lot of, you know, a lot of pressure and a lot of stress. And, um, you know, he knows that I stand with him um, and, you know, I do, you know, I do. I know he's got a lot of a lot going on and I don't like to pressure anybody. Um, I'm thankful that he stops in here every now and then. And oh, you're back. <laughs> Somebody said you might have wanted to call in. I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> I didn't know. I don't, I don't like to pressure anybody for anything. Um, it makes me nervous, <laughs> but if you do want to call in, you're more than welcome. Um, but yeah, um, I did drop my number if you want to call in Seth, but, um, yeah, we respect you a lot in here and we're for you, you know, you know that, um, and I appreciate you so, so much. Um, yeah. I know you have a lot going on. 
but my chat really, really is for the victims, and we really care a lot about you. I just hope I'm not doing anything wrong or or anything like that, because we respect you. <laughs> um, yeah. Do we know if Chris showed up for his polygraph? I don't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think we can believe anything he says at all. I, I really, that's just my opinion. I don't believe that. I don't believe anything. I wouldn't believe it unless I saw it. And he's not obligated to show us anything at all. I only have one goal currently, and that is to only find my son. And that's the way it should be, Seth. Absolutely. And you're doing perfect. You're doing a real good job. You're, I'm watching you on all these platforms, even if it has to be reruns or anything like that, because I can't be everywhere, but, um, and you're doing a good job. You're doing what any father would do. This is what I like to see because I watch, I mean, even when I wasn't on YouTube, I watch a lot of stuff and Honestly, you are out there. You're doing everything that you can. And that's the way that it should be. I'm just disappointed in not only Katie, but I'm disappointed in all these parents that don't get out there and fight for their children, man. It's sad. I mean, why don't they fight for their children? You know? Have y'all... um got any more news or anything like that just recently I, I or have you got any news like I saw Pascal ask and that's one thing we wanted to know over here about the clothes and I seen you did type that um, were they accounted for have they have you got an answer back on that what he was wearing from the restaurant because that's really important that's one thing I would just like to know and they may not can tell you because it's an investigation, but that's a big one. My dog is snoring. Thank you for that. He said he hadn't got any new information. Were, were you able um, to go on Nancy Grace and do your test? A lot of people have been asking that. I just haven't seen anything from her. She, she drops her links pretty late sometimes. Yeah, he could be anywhere. You know, um, this will make you feel good. I saw somebody the other day in my chat and they said, I don't know if it will help, but I'm in UK and I have been putting out flyers. So over here, there's people all around the world who have been putting out flyers regardless. Oh, good. So he says he did show up for his poly and he took it. Okay, great. Great. Now, Mr. Chris needs to take his regardless. He needs to take his. Absolutely. Um, I guess if anybody wants to call in that number, I'll go ahead and take three or four calls. How about that? Since I put the number out, I'll go ahead and take three or four calls. I, I've been wanting to do that anyway, but I'll go ahead and take three or four calls. If you want to call in and let's just see, see what, where people are standing and what's going on. Let's do that. I hadn't done it in a while. 850-691-5559. Since my phone is all charged up, <laughs> all charged up. <laughs> Yeah, I don't feel so either, Alicia. Who will be the first caller? <laughs> and y'all, please keep passing the flyers out. Okay, go ahead, Kat. Go ahead, Kat. Go ahead and call in. I got you.
What happened, Kat? It's not in service. Um, hold on. Let's see. Did I give you the right number? Oh, Lord Jesus. Hold on. Got so many phones. Maybe I got the wrong damn number. Hold on. Oh God, hold on. That's that's the wrong number. I'm giving you the wrong number. I'm giving everybody the wrong number. Two seven six two one one two eight five zero two seven six two one one two. Sorry. Sorry. Eight five zero two seven six two one one two. I gave you the wrong number. <laughs> Eight five zero two seven six two one one two. Hello, Smiley here. <laughs> Hi, sorry, I gave you the wrong number. No. That is okay. This is Cat from Michigan. Hi, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? Fine. How can I help you today? This is just so crazy. Mm -hmm. Like. I feel like I haven't heard of a case like this with so much, like, like, so much, many inconsistencies right. in so long. Like, this is just, I don't know, it's really blowing my mind. It makes me sad. My heart absolutely breaks for Seth, as I'm sure all of us feel that way. Um, yeah. But... It's just, I don't know. I don't, I don't understand how a person, Katie, can think that they, they don't look or make themselves look guilty with their actions. That just really blows my mind. And another thing that blows my mind that I really have needed to speak on is the fact that Chris, like, in his first few interviews, he's all about, you know, I'm very respectful. I'm, I'm respectful, but I'm very blunt. You know, I'm, I'm a very respectful guy. It's always that. So yeah. respectful. Yet, he's, yet he comes off as an asshole, right? Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. It's just so, and it's like, and you know, we all have these questions like, are the cops doing this? Are the cops doing that? Yes, they are. They're seeing everything we're seeing. Right. You know, they have to be. They do. I think they're holding a lot close to their vest. Absolutely. Um, yeah. I think a lot Absolutely. of people need to read between the lines, too. That's just my opinion. Right. Yes. I think yeah. I think they've said a lot without saying a lot. That's just me. Mm -hmm. Just like with the uh, Madeline Soto press conference, everybody was like, that's a nothing burger. We didn't get anything out of that. And I'm like, no, but we kind of did. Yeah. You know, you got to like look in between the lines and you know, Vinnie Paulton taught me how to do that. So yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I yeah. agree. I agree. So, um, do you think, in your opinion, Chris took the lie detective or no? No. Yeah. No. I, um, I think they have lawyered up. I do too. They're being real quiet I, now. Yep, they're quiet. They are silent. We haven't heard boo from them. They lawyered up. Yeah, Definitely. I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. Yeah. So where do you think, do you think that he's close to home or do you think? You know, see, that's where I'm struggling because recently the cases I've been listening to, um, 
a lot of the people have been so close to home. Like one I just listened to, the girl was a hundred feet from her house and no one knew for six months, you know? Yeah. And that kind of stuff just blows my mind. But then I, I, he can't be real close to the house in my opinion, because of the searching they did, you know, last week, he can't be within that, like, general, like, half mile of that house, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's what I think, but, shoot, you never know. You just never know. And you know what? With Chris being a crane operator and him having access to all that heavy-duty equipment, Unfortunately, we might never find him. Yeah. And that's what scares me. It scares me too. And it, it, you know, I don't like the way that Chris also talked about the concrete being poured and all that kind of stuff. That bothers me. Mm -hmm. And yeah, because, because, you know, Smiley, he probably knows what's going on in, in different jobs too, at different locations. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but the foreman, they, they know all that stuff. I'm not sure if he's a foreman, but you just never know. Yeah. Yeah. It bothers me. It bothers me. Oh, I was going to ask you. So I've been seeing people um, in, you know, a few chats here and there saying that um, people at Chris's work at St. Jude's are saying that he wasn't there Sunday and wasn't there, didn't show up to work on Monday. Like he wasn't there Sunday through Monday at all. Do you, have you heard anything of that? I've had a few um, people tell me that. And yeah. um, that's, um, I've had uh, somebody's wife that works with him tell me that. I don't know how true it is, but I've had people tell me that. So only the law enforcement can verify that. I've had several people come to me and tell me that. There is, matter of fact, if he's listening, there's also a guy that told me I worked with Chris and I know all about Mr. Chris. If you're out there, please call in. Please tell us about Chris. He cannot see you. He may know your voice, but just call in. I'm here. Yes, please. Please. Yes. Somebody. Do, because we got to find this kid. We have to find him. We need to bring him back to Seth. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Seth's heart is breaking and you know, ours our hearts are going along with his and we gotta we gotta find him. Yeah, yeah. And uh Misty, uh before I hang up and somebody else calls, Misty says, What Chris say caused the marks on his arm if he claims it was from the dogs? How did the dogs do it? He hadn't seen Sebastian since early February. He right. says, Yeah, and he's he said on another interview, um, well, well, no, he, he said on my interview, actually, I'm sorry, duh. He said that he was in the floor playing with the dogs and the dogs did it. No, no, Chihuahua, no way. I had a big pit bull and she wouldn't even do that to my arm. Yeah. No way Chihuahuas did that. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, no, well, it's little Morgies, night. but I can't see it still. I, I've just, I, I, no, I, on yeah. both, on last both. Night, someone called into Dolly's. And she sent in a picture that, like, enhanced the marks on his arms. And then um, in another picture, overlaid his, Sebastian's teeth in his smile onto that picture. Yeah. And they lined right up. Yeah. I, I don't know. It just, it isn't looking good. Sarah, uh, Sarah's saying Morky's can't do damage. So I don't know, but we'll see. All right. Well, What's let, a, mor a Morky? You... Yeah, it was a Morky. They're like little What's Yorkie. They're like little Yorkies, but they're mixed. So yeah, what? What? I wonder what they're mixed with. I'm, I'm not sure. Okay, so people's calling. Yeah, and, like... and why was his his thing? You know, why why would he be? That sounds like he came home and was. Oh, the puppies, the dogs, let me hug you and play with you when my kid's not missing. Let's not worry about that. Let's worry about the dogs. I don't know if that's what that kind of says to me. Yeah, I just don't. I just don't see it. So I don't know. I don't know. But thank you for calling. Let yeah. me try to get these. Thank I've got about three people. My call. Oh, you're more than welcome. Thank you for being here. Yes. Um, last thing I just want to say is, Chris, if you're listening Katie, if you're listening, come on. We know better. We're not stupid. You guys are insulting our innocence. I mean, our, <laughs> <laughs> our, 
our intelligence. Yes. <laughs> I obviously don't know very much. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and Seth, um, I really hope we can bring your baby home to you. We have to. My heart's breaking with you, and um, we're, you know we're all behind you, and we love you, and uh, we're praying for you. So. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, Smiley. Have a good day. You too. Bye bye. All right. Bye bye. Uh, okay, so they're mixed. They're mixed. Smiley Stories World. Hey, Smiley. Hey, how are you? Hold on, let me put you on speaker. Okay. Uh -oh. Kitty Cat here. Hey, Kitty Cat. Hold on, where is my speaker? Oh, shit. Shoot. Really? Oh. I crack you up. I don't know because I guess I got all these. Lord have mercy. Why is it not going on speaker? Lord have mercy. Uh, listen, this is cray cray right here. <laughs> listen, I can't hear you. Cancel. Y'all, y'all think Smiley is kidding. Oh my God. What is going on here? Okay. Recent. Oh my God. Y'all are, look, mm, shit, no, 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 really, what in the hell is going on, oh my god, uh-oh, hold on, is somebody, oh, there you go, but why is it not, okay, send voicemail, Okay, there we go. Okay, it's because people's calling. All right, can you hear me now? Uh, I can hear you fine. Can you hear me? I can hear you fine now, honey. <laughs> What's going on? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not going to put any blame on people because, you know, there's just so much of that. God wouldn't want me to do it. He's the only one that could judge it. But, uh, I mean, it don't look good for a certain couple. I'll just say that. Right. Yeah, it don't. Um, oh, go ahead. Yeah. No, I was just going to say it don't. It don't look good to me. I know. I, I know. I mean, I've been following this. I don't know if it's, I usually don't look for stuff like this. I watch, you know, stupid stuff on YouTube, like movies and, you know, st stupid stuff, but it's like, the Lord brought it into my lap, and I don't know if it's because I have a semi-special needs granddaughter myself. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I have, I mean, this whole Sebastian thing has just become a part of my world. It has consumed every minute of every day. And I live in Indiana. I don't live there. But I tell you what, my heart is so broken for that child. And Seth, if you're listening, honey, stay strong um try to keep your spirits up i know it's it, i know it's got to be hard um i i don't know what else to to say but my gut is telling me something big is about to happen though yeah i have that gut feeling too i, I don't think it will be too long and i believe that they're on the right track I, again i feel like they're holding stuff close to the best and I believe they will find Sebastian. And I believe they are building a case. That's just my opinion. I do, too. And I tell you what, that um, that that interview you did out with both of them, I think that's going to be a big part of it, little smiley. I don't know. I was never expecting that. But, you know, it happened. And God sure does have a funny way of putting us in places that we never dreamed of. Exactly. Exactly. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Um, well, I will get off here and let other callers have a chance. God bless you. God bless Seth. And watch over that boy. Yes, ma'am. All right. Well, you have a good day. And thank you so much. All right. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye. Smiley Stories World. Yes. Good morning, young Shelby. Hello. Hello. Hi, Smiley here. Hi, Smiley. I just have, I've been following this ever since it started. And I just have a question <clears throat> that maybe you can help me with. You know, like in the beginning of the investigation, 
they said uh, a neighbor came forth and said that there was lights on in the house early in the morning and that you could see uh, shadows in the house. Has anybody ever done anything with that? Um, I don't know if that's something that Ellie is holding close or not, but that was one of the reasons I will tell you that during my interview with them, I asked Katie, I said, did you, you know, because she said she went to bed at midnight and I said, did you go in? See, there's always a reason I ask stuff. Maybe people don't understand it, but I said, did you happen to go in Sebastian's room and turn on the light and look in on him before you went to bed at midnight? And she said, no. Well, that was the reason that I was asking. So it, somebody's lying or it never happened. I don't know. I know that I just, I hadn't heard anything else about that. And I was just wondering, I had asked a couple other, you know, text a few other ones and hadn't heard anything back. Yeah. But, I was just wondering. Yeah. So if that was true, um, and it could be, I'm not saying anybody's not telling the truth. If that was, tr if, if that is true, then Ellie does know it and they're holding that close and nobody's just talking about it anymore. And I just don't understand why it's not being brought out, whether the clothes he had on uh, at Texas Roadhouse, I don't understand why they're not saying if those was at the house or you know, um, that would tell a lot right there. Now, last night, I don't know if you heard on the Pascal show, um, Seth, uh, that was asked to Seth, and he did absolutely text TBI, and if I'm not mistaken, FBI or Sumner County, but mm -hmm. um, I don't know if he got an answer back or not. That could be because it's part of the investigation, but thank God that did get asked and and the way i always look at these things is they may not can tell you or they may not can tell like seth or mm -hmm. me or us or whatever but if they don't think of these things and i'm sure they have then it does they see these things and it puts it in their head to think and say ah okay well where are those clothes okay. <laughs> but i'm sure they're smarter than us and <clears throat> you know, that's what I want to know. So um, everybody's been wanting to know that. And that was a very good question. Very good question. So I don't know if he'll get that answer or not, but he did take it last night and he did ask that question. So hopefully we'll know that soon because that's very important. It's very important to the whole entire case. Absolutely. But, but it, I, don't, I don't feel like that he walked out of the house. I do not either. I, I do, do not, not feel either. Like, I feel like he was carried out and put in her vehicle. Yeah. Yeah. So, and my heart goes out to Seth. I watch, you know, I watch him and my heart just breaks for him. Oh. You know, and as a mother, I mean, I have, I have a 40 year old son that if I haven't heard from in a couple of days or at least once a week, um, I'm trying to find out, hey, I haven't heard from you. What's going on? Mm -hmm. You know, and he's a he's a grown man. You know, I like to keep in touch with my children. I can't imagine not looking for my child. Absolutely. Absolutely. I just can't. I can't either. The not knowing has to be killing every, you know, everybody, especially yeah. Seth. Yep. Yeah, and that's what I've told my kids, you know, even if it, or told my son, my girls are pretty good about keeping up with me, but my son is like, even if it's just a, hey, mom, I'm good, you know, that takes a lot of pressures off of a mama's shoulder. Yeah. You know, just knowing that you're okay. Absolutely. So, but I just can't understand. But I wholeheartedly believe Chris is behind it all, and it's got to do with the court date with his child which he didn't want the child anyway. He just wanted her to, in my opinion, mm -hmm. to hold over Nina's head as a control factor. Yeah. That's sad. You know, it's very it sad. sad. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Well, I'm going to get off here. Thank you guys. Every one of you guys for everything that you're doing to bring attention for Sebastian and, you know, but I'm going to let somebody else get in there. Okay. But I was just curious about that one question. All right. Well, thank you for calling. Uh-huh. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hello, Smiley. 
Hey, Smiley. Hey. I'm watching you on my TV and I'm watching the comments. And I, um, I don't want to put no blame on anyone because, like, I don't know what's going on. Right. Really. Right. But, um, I would like to, um, tell Seth if he's still in the chat that whatever the outcome is be with God because I've buried two of my own children and one was murdered and she was five. Sorry. Um, and I'm still fighting. Um, he is appealing this second life term. And if he gets denied his appeal, then he's going to go to the Supreme court and he's been in prison for 30 years. This happened in 1994. Um, this is Robin, right? Yes. Can you, if you don't mind, when you get back down in the um, chat, um, mm -hmm. I, I know because it's been in the paper, uh, it might help Seth. I don't know, but anything to help. I don't know if he'd want to read right now, but um, could you like put the link on that also down or some? I don't know if somebody knows it, but I, I think it would, you know, so he would understand also as well, what you're talking about and uh, put that link to the newspaper or something down in there. Do you see what I'm saying? Like to your child? The, yeah. The guy. All I can really do is put in, um, or somebody's put, tell, tell us what newspaper that's in Robin. Um, it's in the battle Creek Inquirer, but it's not, it, no, it's not in the Battle Creek Inquirer. It wasn't in the paper. It was on the news. I just went to court in June. And then we're waiting. Yeah. We're fight I've been fighting for 30 something years. Yeah. Yeah. And like, I lost my oldest son. He had epilepsy and he drowned. And. Sorry. And can I ask you something? So like when Katie says she heard a thud or, or she didn't say that on mine, but then when she says she heard a thud on Nancy Grace, either one on mine or Nancy Grace, do you find it odd that she did not get up and go check on her son? Just Definitely. I mean, her actions are not those of a mother, um, especially a special needs child. Uh, I followed my son everywhere that I could possibly go. I even went fishing with him until he told me that I couldn't go anymore because I'm too, I was too loud. I can't talk. It, fishing is a peaceful thing that people do. Mm -hmm. And um, I didn't know that fish can hear you. So I was like, whatever, Nick. <laughs> But yeah, she, um, why is she hiding? Um, I, it doesn't make sense to me. Right. Yeah. There's just something not right. Um, just not right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in your total opinion, um, I know you don't want to blame anybody. You said that in the beginning, but in your total opinion, what are you thinking? Like, do you think he walked out of that house? Really? I mean, no, no. but you know, I watched Dolly too. And someone said in his comments yesterday that Sebastian was under someone's car. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Well, no, not that day. Okay. Let me explain that because it, okay. Not that day, but oh. yeah, it wasn't that day. But on one of the dispatch calls, uh, the first one that was released, you can hear them. And what they're saying is before he was like before the 26, a neighbor told them one time he had hid under their car or their son's car. So mm -hmm. um, I'm wondering if... Um, they're saying like he wasn't a runner. Maybe he didn't run away and all that stuff. But 
it makes me wonder, was he scared at one point? To me, that's just showing um, what was he scared of and when was that? I would like to know that Chris, was it when Chris was at home or did they put him out at some point? Not that day, not the 25th or 26th. Let's just get that straight. But it was on that call and the law enforcement did say that they were relaying that to the other deputies on the scene, but it was not that day. Mm. So I feel like a lot of people's getting that confused. But again, it was not that day. No, they did not see him that day under a car. No, absolutely not. I mean, what mother don't speak out? Where's all the flyers? Right. I don't I, I, I don't get it. I used my own money to fly to Michigan to rally for my daughter. And I've done it so many times and this last time I went, I made a bunch of posters and I, well, I made a poster with her picture on it and I got 50 pages and I, I planned on the courtroom being packed, mm -hmm. you know, because this was his sentencing. So anyways, he was sentenced again to another life in prison without parole. Right. This is the second time, and my son's telling me, Mom, he's there's not a judge that's going to let him out. Right, right. Well, we never know. Our, our system, sometimes it's just so messed up, but I pray that, you know, he stays in there and never gets out. I mean, that's horrible. Well, <laughs> a lot of people don't know about this Miller hearing. He's mm -hmm. under a Miller hearing, and... What that is, it protects juveniles. So because he was 16 when he did this to my daughter, he's still under the Miller hearing, which pisses me off bad. Yeah. I think some I of can't them. write to no one. I can't, you know, speak my mind about it. I don't know. Who I would even talk to? I, you know, I, I just let go and let God, Seth. That's what you need to do without knowing the outcome of where Sebastian could be. When it <coughs> speaks Sebastian's name, I don't feel like he's deceased. I feel like he's with somebody. Just like Summer, I don't feel Summer is deceased. And that's, I mean, you know, it's a very, I mean, it's a very good possibility. I mean, we never know. Um, I mean, with the no emotions, I mean, especially in Summer's case, mm -hmm. you, you, you never know. Sometimes it just makes you rethink everything. I, I don't know. Well, I lived the day my daughter was kidnapped by my neighbor. I've been living that since that day. And I can't get it out of my head what he did to her. It was so brutal that they wouldn't even let me back there to see her. So, I mean, I, I, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, all I can say... I mean, I can put the link into my daughter's Facebook group, and if Seth wants to join it, I don't, I mean, I, I don't know how that would help him. I just want him to let go and let God, because we don't know where Sebastian is, if he is alive or deceased. Yeah. Well, I know that he wants to keep the hope and I want to keep the hope for him and I only want good things for him. And I know if anybody can bring his son home, it's going to be Seth, period. He's out there pounding the pavement and he's he's doing all the right things, getting on the panels and talking and doing that. And that's what his own mother should be doing. And that's exactly yeah, that's what she should be doing at all costs. And my thing is now 
they've took the flyers and everything off their trucks, cars, and whatever. And they, and in my opinion, they did that just for show when the first batch of YouTubers and stuff went down there. And I think it's bull crap. Definitely. Um, I'm always talking to my advocate. I have an advocate of my own in Michigan. And she just told me the other day they're going to go in for a briefing with the appellate officer on my daughter's case. Yeah. The May 23rd. Yeah. So it's a briefing from Jason's attorney to the appellate officer. And I already know he's going to get denied. So when he does, he'll take it to the Supreme Court. He yeah. needs to stop fighting and lay his butt down. Yeah. Because I'm not going to quit. One of us is going to die. Yeah. And I don't have 30 more years to keep fighting with them. Yeah. But I do have five grandkids and a grown son. And they all know, keep fighting for Nicole. Yeah. Well, if there's anything you feel that um, you can send me that might help as far as agencies or anything that maybe they haven't thought of or don't know about, I would appreciate it if you could email me because, uh, I mean, and that goes for anybody in the chats or anything, because sometimes there's places out there that people don't know about. And even though the situations are different, they also may be able to hook up, you know, and, and, and I know he's not found and I know that, um, it, you know, he's not deceased. We're hoping he's alive and all that. But it's good to also have these things and even for other cases. So if there's anything that, you know, anybody can put in my email and that goes for anybody, I would appreciate those links. Well all courthouses have victim advocates. So Seth, if you're listening and it does come out that he is deceased, which I'm praying that he's not. Yeah. Every state and county courthouse has victim advocates. And I would, Oh, I would put her in the ground. I would put her in the, she knows where Seth Sebastian is. Yeah. That little boy didn't have a chance. And I'm, <clears throat> I'm sorry, but my niece has three autistic children, and Sebastian's behavior is the same as. So I'm familiar with autism, and Sebastian's not doing anything wrong. No, absolutely not. And a child, like he's 15, you know, physically, but mentally, I, I don't know. He, I don't know. I mean, I know a 25 year old man that's facing life in prison because he did stupid things and he's autistic and bipolar and, you know, ADHD and all kind of something wrong with him and. He went crazy one day and stabbed two people, gutted a dog, fought officers while he was in jail. And I feel so bad for him. And it's like, you know, there's nothing I can do. I'm not his mother. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> well, I appreciate you calling in, Robin. And um, hopefully, hopefully we'll be able to advocate and get Sebastian's name and face out there as much as possible and all work together to be able to just do the right thing, say the right things. And, you know, nobody's making us go away and um, we'll absolutely do everything we can to help and not hurt. That's all that we can pray for and bring him home to his daddy, you know, his daddy wants him. He wants to find him at all costs. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Smiley. And I will drop my daughter's Facebook page in your chat. Okay. Thank you for calling in. You have a good day. You too, honey. Bye. Bye-bye. So, y'all, 
I appreciate y'all all calling in. I hope some of this helps. Um, I mean, it's all horrible and it's all sad. And, you know, we only want the very best. We only want the very best. We are not going away. We're not going away. We're absolutely not going away. I'm not going away. The ones that's really here for these people. Um, we're going to stay here and I am for the victims. I don't care if they're grown. I don't care if they're children. I don't care if they have an illness. I don't care if they're disabled. I don't care if they're black, white, orange, green. I don't care if they can walk, talk. I don't care if they're bedridden. I don't care if their puppy's missing. If you need me to put it out, I don't care what it is. I'm here and I'm going to be here and there ain't no smelly, smiley, smellies, um, Joe blows, scary worries. There's nobody who is going to stop me. Nobody, nobody, you know, I am here and I'm staying here. And if you can print these flyers out and hand them out, do it. If you had mail something, put one of these flyers in your mail. You don't even have to leave your home. And if that does not, is not good enough for you, you sit behind this computer all day watching these, watching what I'm doing, worrying about what I'm doing. Just share out the lives. And then you can talk and make fun of me. How about that? Just share it out. Share it out. Do whatever you do best. I don't care what you do. Okay? Just do it. Tape it to your window. If you got to send something back, if you're sending a phone back, if you're sending a return item back, put a flyer in there. <laughs> Tie green to your mailbox. Tape one to your mailbox on each side. Do that. Do whatever you do. I don't care what you do. Think outside the box. Start putting your thinking caps on. Okay? Just do it. Like Nike says, just do it. Hey, Trev Time. And y'all go subscribe to Trev Time. He is on everything, honey. He is on it, and he does so good. And I love y'all. Thank you for any super chats or whatever y'all have sent today. Um, I'm sorry I got the wrong number out at first. And no, I didn't dox anybody. That used to be the number, and I changed it. <laughs> so nobody's getting a bunch of weird calls or anything. <laughs> so, so there's that. <laughs> we love you, Seth. We do love you. And um, I'm watching you and praying for you and, um, and Sebastian. And hopefully everything will come to an end soon. You get you some rest. You need your rest. Do what your doctor tells you to do because you have to be here for Sebastian when he gets back. Okay. And I love you. And I will talk to y'all later. See you on the streets. Bye.